Hello everyone, MD here, and in this video we've updated our ultra rare TMR rankings. Now, Chris and I went back and forth about countless TMRs on this list and what their value actually is in War of the Visions. So needless to say, it's doubtful that any of you out there will agree that this is a perfect list. However, just like debating which characters are our favorites to use in any Final Fantasy game, there's usually a general consensus for the groupings of which characters are more useful than not. And no, there's nothing you can say that will convince me that Kate Sith, Realm, or Edward are useful in any kind of way. Similar to our unit tier guide, we break the TMRs down into five tiers. Our D tier, Moogle, our C tier, Cactuar, our B tier, Chocobo, our A tier, Tonberry, and the best of the best, our S tier, Behemoth. Let's start with the worst, our Moogle D tier. Coming in as the worst ultra rare TMR in War of the Visions, we have Veln's Lightning Halberd. A mega rare Ice Lance technically provides more attack, and the conditional accuracy gain on a critical hit ability is laughable. At 79, we have Lamega's Lightweight Steel Fist. Like Veln's TMR, you'd be better off equipping the mega rare Kaiser Knuckles as a fist based weapon on a unit. Frederica's Victory Ribbon is awful. Luartha's Arcadia Gun has a decent attack modifier but is outclassed in that category as well as bonus or ability by the mega rare Ross Algethi. It's a similar story for Cowl's Hunting Bow as its mega rare Killer Bow counterpart outdoes it in every way. Moraga's Barbarian King's Axe is the best axe in the game and it provides an initial AP boost, but come on folks, it's an axe, not a whole lot of use for it right now. Winter Victoria's Bell Adorned Ribbon comes in at number 74 primarily because Jump isn't really utilized in a meaningful way in the game. 9S's Yorha Combat Clothes might give regen, but for all practical purposes, recovering 10% of your HP in a turn isn't going to save you from the next hit you take. If the Combat Clothes have any real value, it comes in nullifying charm and keeping those steamy <laughs> lamias away. Mm -hmm. Ramza's outfit is pretty worthless, as TP usually isn't an issue in battle. Elsa Rell's heart-shaped hairpin provides a boost to spirit, but its ability is nothing to swoon over, and as beautiful as Winter Venera is, her kitty hood is nothing to put on your Christmas or Chris Moogle list. And now we've made it to... Salir. Oh, Salir. We were wrong about your magical string, but why, oh why is this your favorite dress? It's not flattering, my love. Like an upright giant magenta papazon chair. It looks like it's consuming you. Oh, wait. It is actually consuming you. Quite literally, if you look at its ability. Take it off, sweet Salir, and let's never speak of it again. Howlet's Sawilo coat also consumes its wear. Katone Summer Swimsuit's tiny little... Summer hairpin, you thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Come on now, get your head out of the Midgar underside. Her hairpin provides some spirit and missile resistance, but be honest, you're not going to use that. And rounding out our Moogle D tier, we have Engelbert's Solidus Shield, which turns you into Hulk for a turn in exchange for a pound of flesh, and Victoria's Greed Armor, which might be useful in a spear wielding unit but really nothing else. Obviously, ultra rare TMRs, for the most part, have a little bit of value, but we don't recommend going out of your way to get any of the gear that we just listed. Think of everything in our Moogle tier as you would the 135th soldiers in Final Fantasy VII. You can get them and they're kinda cool to have, but they don't really serve a useful purpose in the game. Next up is our Cactuar C tier, and where some of Chris and I's disagreements start to appear. But leading off is Skull's Gauntlet of Thunder, followed by Gilgamesh's Helm of the Swarm. The gauntlet is a lot like Engelbert's shield, but modifies magic instead of attack, so one really could make the argument that it belongs in the Moogle tier. The Helm of the Sworn isn't great, but would have a lot more value if it lasted for three turns instead of one. At 62, you have Lastwell's Clothes, which provides an airship load of crit, actually the most in a single modifier in the game for a piece of equipment, but not much in terms of anything else, which is where it pales in comparison to Barrett's vest or Titus's shoes. This is followed by the Guardian's Mantle of LD Leonis, which will puff up a team's HP larger than the Mom Bomb from Final Fantasy IV. The Warrior of Light's Gauntlets of Light have the same effect except they provide TP restoration. 
Gargus' Magicite Breathing Apparatus provides a decent boost to magic attack for allies, and Remora's Divine Grace Wand provides single target resistance, which is valuable, but the bonus is only 10, so it lands at number 58. Next is Raldor's Adamantine Ornament, which for the record I might actually rather have a 135th Soldier than, but it is a mega booster for accuracy. This is followed by Freyevia's Florid Hairpin at number 56, which is highly effective for wiping out any 122Bs, Ayakas, Tifas, Halloween Leelas, or Lucias that you find in the wild. Number 55 is Weekend at Bernie's Zazen's Jacket of the Upstart. It'll really boost the damage that an Earth unit can deal, even to Wind units because of the Earth Penetration bonus, setting up an interesting idea of an attacking tank in Kilfe. Plus, it provides 15 Evade, which is tied for the best single bonus in War of the Visions. The downside here is that it is highly specialized in usefulness to Earth Element units. That's why it falls in the middle of our Cactuar tier. At 54 and 53, we have Stern's Lion's Armor and Luel's Sage's Beret. The Lion Armor boosts AoE resistance, which is great, but only benefits the wearer in this instance, and being armor limits those who can equip it. The floppy sage bun boosts luck, which in and of itself is unique to any piece of equipment in War of the Visions right now, and luck affects several different things in the game. The last seven of our Cactuar C tier is where I bust out my chainsaw and Chris counters with Aura Bolts and Suplexes, which, by the way, if you get those references, you might be a son of a submariner. Anyway, I would contend that they belong in our Chocobo B tier over some of the stuff we have in there, but hey. I've got the fancy castle and hot babes, Chris can have the flashy blitzes and tier rankings, but I digress. At 52, we have Eileen's Scanning Goggles, which provide a wealth of bonuses to attack and hit points, followed by Ildira's Calculator's Robe at 51, which allows the wearer to switch places with an enemy and then take another turn immediately via the Quicken ability that it bestows. Barret's Vest is similar to Lastwell's Clothes in the fact that it provides a great deal of crit but it also provides 10 defense as well as crit evade. Given the right circumstance and the right tank wearing it, Whisper's Magicite Mask has the ability to save a squishy friend's backside in battle. Uh, if only Cecil could have had this when Tella took on Golbez. Rest in peace, old man. The last three in our Cactuar C tier are Tifa's Elbow Pad, which provides a significant attack boost to allies, Sakura's Clothes, which decreases activation time by 35% for four turns, and Niv Lu's V-Clan Mask, which increases the evade of allies by a significant amount. You know what they say, the best defense against a strong attack is, well, to not get hit at all. On to our Chocobo B tier. A lot of what you're going to see in here relates to damage mitigation or damage modification. None of the gear in this tier is a waste of your resources, but maybe not the gear that you are actively targeting in the development of your overall unit roster. Than Creed's Bodyguard's Coat has seen a surge in usefulness with all the Yuna Sakura teams polluting the PvP world, but outside of that aspect of the game, this TMR would normally belong with the Moogles in the worst of the worst. Camillo's Custom Armor provides a bonus to Light Attack, making it useful to boost units like Rob or Warrior of Light, and it provides both Defense and Spirit. The downside is that it is classified as armor, and thus, the roster of units that can equip it is thinned out. Delita's Endurance Vest allows for some AP manipulation, which could be useful in specific circumstances, but gains most of its value in being an armor type that provides a significant boost to evade. Dwayne's Helm of Remorse provides some defense and spirit and finds its usefulness in boosting magic resistance for the unit wearing it, more likely than not a tank charging the magic ranks of an opponent. Kylo Ren Stern's Accursed Armor takes the edge off of single target attacks and provides a good chunk of defense, making it useful for frontline tanks. Similarly, Kilfay's Staff Mage's Hairpin provides a bit more resistance to single target attacks and it is an accessory, meaning most anybody can equip it. However, it does decrease a unit's resistance to AoE attacks, so pay attention to your matchups and make sure to use something else if you are going up against an AoE heavy team. Rob's Glinting Armor comes in at number 39. It has a high bonus to evade for an armor type and boosts slash attack for nearby allies. The downside here is that 
but it doesn't provide any bonuses to defense or spirit, which is kind of a bit odd for something considered armor. Now for some damage modification TMRs. Yerma's Herculean Waistcloth, Auron's Clothing, and Winter Ramada's Sagewood Hairpin all provide some decent stat gains as well as feature an ability that significantly boosts attack for the wearer. Although the Hairpin is a helm, which shrinks the pool of who can equip it a bit, we placed it a bit higher than the other two because of its ability to boost movement. At 35, we have Glacella's White Wolf's Armor for its ability to recover AP while also mitigating slash attack damage. Both of these are boosts that are useful for a tank unit who can equip armor type TMRs to use before blitzing the front line of battle. Next up we have Cloud's Soldier's Shoulder Pad. Really Gumi? His shoulder pad? Not his buster sword that could have boosted all elemental attacks? Maybe a weapon that provided some defense as well? Heck, we probably would have rather had Cloud's iconic hair as an accessory that would have an automatic percent chance to charm any female unit or blind any male unit that ends their turn in its radius. But I digress. We'll just have to accept the fact that we get his lame shoulder pad. Although it does have some useful stat gains and an ability that reduces AP usage, I guess that's a plus. Jaden Rundall's Rundall Emblem is one of the most powerful accessories for ranged units as it mitigates damage and increases missile attack at the same time. And rounding out our Chocobo B tier are Verlix Takumi's Shoulder Rest and Moore's Star Funeral Pendant. With the pendant getting the slight edge because anybody can equip it, while the Shoulder Rest is an armor type TMR, which limits its user pool significantly. Both, however, boost either defense or spirit a great deal for all surrounding allies. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Moore's TMR being used quite a bit in PvP and match class modes in an attempt to neutralize all the Yunas and Sakuras out there. Personally, I would make the argument that it belongs in our A tier, but you remember that whole castle, babes, and tier listing hierarchy referenced earlier? Yeah, I guess the pendant belongs with the chocobos, apparently. On to our Tonberry A tier ultra rare TMRs. You really can't go wrong going after any of the TMRs we have listed in here as they are certainly worthy of your time and valuable War of the Visions resources that you are probably hoarding. At number 30, we have Kane's Dragoon Helmet. The ability to speed up a unit in any way, at least at this point in time in War of the Visions, is going to take precedent in value over other boosts and abilities. In this case, the Dragoon Helmet provides its wearer with haste, which significantly increases speed, but the TMR actually loses some of its appeal compared to other speed enhancing TMRs because it is a helmet, which limits who can and can't equip it. Number 29 is Summer Swimsuit Lilith's Sunglasses, which slightly edges the Rundall Emblem in usefulness for ranged units. They increase range and amplify damage significantly. Aerith's iconic pink clothes come in at number 28 as they boost single target resistance for all surrounding allies a good bit as well as provide the wearer with notable gains to defense and spirit. Who knew some Midgar slum scraps were stronger in fortitude than finely crafted steel laden lion and glinting armor? King Mont's Lion's Cloak is similar except instead of a single target resistance boost to allies, it provides AoE resistance to allies and has slightly better gains in defense and spirit. 26 is Halloween Rare U Zombie Mask. Auto revive? Yes, please. 25 is Miranda's Red Jacket. Boosting magic attack and slash attack for surrounding allies while also providing plus 10 defense? Yes, please. 24 is Oberon's Shoulder Armor. Nullifying haste, decreasing the enemy's chance to inflict a critical hit, and boosting attack for self by 40%? Talk about turning a tank unit into a premier attacker, yes please! 23 is Volusia's Moosis Knee Pad, which lands near our top 20 primarily for its ridiculous plus 14 spirit, but a 40% boost to magic and a 30% boost to dexterity as well? Again, yes please. 22 is Dress Up Glacella's Dress of Wazette, boosting allies magic significantly while providing the wearer magic resistance penetration and 12 spirit? Yes please! Winter Mashery's Angel Ribbon is an excellent TMR to utilize at the beginning of battle to give adjacent allies AP. 
Not to mention it has its own defense and spirit gains and is an accessory, meaning most anyone can look pretty if they want to. Agrius's Holy Knight armor is fantastic for its ability to provide the wearer both protect and shell, making it one of the top TMR choices for tank units approaching the front line of combat. Cracking our top 20 at number 19 is Paladin Cecil's Saint Circlet for its ability to boost attack and magic for allies a great deal and its flexibility in being an accessory. At number 18, we have Rosa's Barrette. Like Final Fantasy XII when discussing the most underrated Final Fantasy game in the series, Rosa's Barrette is one of the most underrated ultra rare TMRs in War of the Visions. A 50% gain to both attack and magic for the wearer is ridiculous. It doesn't matter if you're a spellcaster, a tank, or somewhere in between. This accessory also unnecessarily gives 10 spirit as the cherry on top. Von Pinello and Balthia rejoice! Charlotte's Knight of Grand Shelt Shield reduces damage taken, whether it be physical, magical, or otherwise, just damage taken, and restores AP to the wearer, giving it a combination of incredibly useful abilities to go along with significant HP and spirit gains. At number 16, we have Masha Ree's Steel Maiden's Necklace. In our first TMR rankings video, we hated on the Steel Maiden's Necklace and ranked it really low, and holy meteors we got more backlash than Final Fantasy II's lackluster ending. But, as usual, all of you smart Moogles out there were right. It essentially provides all surrounding allies with a stronger protect and shell effect for three turns and recovers a ton of lost HP. It's pretty OP. So our apologies to the Kingdom of Horn. Please don't come skewer Chris and I with your hordes of incompetent soldiers. Rounding out our Tonberry A tier is Mediina's Kaleido Moon at number 15. Boosting surrounding allies attack, magic, and acquired AP is fairly self-explanatory as to why it's one of the best TMRs in the game. The fact that it is extremely easy to unlock for new players to the game adds significantly to its value. And finally, we've made it to our Behemoth S tier. The best of the best. These are the ultra rare TMRs that you should actively be hunting and unlocking to enhance your overall unit roster in the most effective ways. As was the case in our first TMR tier video seven months ago, an obvious premium has been placed on speed. Right now, nothing outclasses it in War of the Visions. The first four in our S tier, however, are in here not because of speed boosting, but instead for their OP abilities. At number 14, we have Yuna's Clothes, which lets any unit drop an AoE near full heal plus protect and shell on surrounding allies. Not to mention her threads are apparently as strong or stronger than most steel-based armors in the game. Just another piece of Yuna's absolutely ridiculous kit. Number 13 is Garvel's Peacetime Brooch, which is a must-have for any magic-based unit. Significant boosts to both magic and magic resist penetration is nastier than absolute virtue. Equip this bad boy on a mage and watch them go full Seymour Flux on the battlefield. Coming in at number 12 is Aldoa's weird loincloth apron whatever it is thing. The stats aren't great, but the AP restore and 50 defense penetration is one of the best abilities in the game. The only downside here is that some jobs can't equip it. At number 11, we have Rain's Clothes. 14 Spirit is crazy high for a TMR, and its AoE ability that gives a plus 25 Spirit boost to allies is insane. Rain's TMR can completely shut down magic teams in a hurry. Top 10 and time for the speed. Venera Fenice's Bewitching Heals increase Light Killer and they are an accessory, increasing their value for those looking to topple Yuna, Sakura, or Warrior of Light. Oh and the agility. Number 9, Katone Saiga Gauntlet increases move and draws enemy fire elsewhere. Oh yeah, and the agility. Number 8, Titus's weird looking shoes. Awesome if you're building a unit for dealing critical hits. They also provide a bit of defense, which is a bonus. And yeah, the agility. Number 7, Orlando's Thunder God Cape. Ridiculously lowers damage taken by its wearer by 35%. It's an accessory. It gives defense and... Hmm, we forget anything? Oh yeah, the agility. Number 6, Aoka's Sacred Step. AoE damage reduction for allies, 10 spirit, and you get it by now, the agility. Now for our 
top five best ultra rare TMRs in Final Fantasy War of the Visions. And needless to say, they are all accessories, so most any unit can equip them. At number five, we have Halloween Little Leela's Wolf Band. Yes, it decreases the wearer's defense and spirit by 10, which is a lot, but the fact that it increases magic by 80% is epic. Like Rat's Tail 8-bit transforming into the Warriors of Light epic. The fact that Gumi tacked an extra 5 agility onto this TMR makes me feel like Edgar and Locke swooning over some fire-wielding babe. At number 4, we have 2B's Yorha Combat Goggles. Plus 7 Spirit, plus 10 Evade, acquired AP up 80%, and increased agility by 25%. No downsides. No catch, no tiny fine print that you should probably read, just 100% unfiltered, untainted, big whale flying to the moon awesomeness. We've placed Lucia's Bewitching Boots at number 3. For starters, they look awesome. You can't tell me that if your significant other walked into the bedroom wearing those, you wouldn't be hotter than Gurgu's Volcano. But the defense evade, range, agility, and extra agility boosts are where these heals really dominate. Coming in as our second best ultra rare TMR in War of the Visions is Helena's Witchy Black Rose Headdress. You're probably seeing a theme here with all of the TMRs that give a percentage boost to agility, but in the case of this Thick Mama's TMR, it also heavily mitigates damage taken, provides a boost to magic, and tops it off with more additional agility. At number one, was there ever a doubt? The Bells, AP Auto Restore and 7 Agility. Terrible character, even at 120, but the best TMR in War of the Visions. <laughs> To be honest, be honest, I think, I think I'm, only I'm only in it for, for the, the bells. bells. There you have it everyone, our ultra rare TMR tier rankings. Let us know in the comments if you found any creative and useful combinations with any of the aforementioned TMRs. And please, sub, like, share the love. Check out the details for our Nerd Night ultra rare TMR community contest using this image in the video description below. We'll catch you next time.